Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I have a cool guy on the podcast today who I met back in New York. And I don't know if you remember this, but one day I, I sent out an SOS call to the universe and I got Dilip here to come out of nowhere. He just, I, I, I don't know how you came, but you came to 43rd where I was and I was dealing with some crazy tension in my body. And you just said, okay, lie down on the ground in my office. So I laid down and you put your hand on my chest and I could feel like the room was swirling um everything was swirling and I felt so much energy and I was like can you feel that and you're like yeah my hand is so hot feel it and somehow you just like vacuum cleaned all the negative energy out of me and I felt so good after that so his name is well I call him Guruji Dilip I don't know your full name Dilip I just know you're Dilip and I know you're a guru or a Guruji but um I've known him for over 10 years it's been about 11 years I would say um haven't seen you in a while, but he's a man of uh, peace and he goes to peace meetings all day, every day, because that's what he strives for. Um, and he has a background of being, knowing a lot and participating a lot in Hinduism. So I wanted to pick his brain about sexuality from the Hindu perspective. Um, so welcome, Dilip. That was a crazy long intro, but welcome. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, my brother, Andrew Lau for inviting me to part of this discussion. Yeah, yeah. He's so by the way, you you can throw something at Dilip and he won't react. He's like he's he's committed to being peaceful everywhere he goes. Um I've never seen you out of context of just being happy and smiley. Um so thank you for joining us and so where exactly were you born? Which part of India were you born in? I'm from Kerala state uh, in India. That's the southern west side of India. The, uh, when you look at the map about India, the bottom part, south part is very sharp edge triangle type. We, we have like a three oceans, Arabian seas, Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean. And half of that area no, to the west side is Kerala state. Uh, I'll say the land where St. Thomas the Apostle went and converted 12 Brahmin families. This one is from my father's side. Oh, wow. Uh, older Christians than Europe and America. <laughs> That's really cool oh. history. Is that in the south, is it is it hot, hotter there? Is there, is there more typhoons in the South or like what's, is there anything uh, we, unique about living in the South of India? Uh, usually we have monsoon from June to September, so full rain, continuous rain. And you see more green in that state. Oh yeah. Very well green. And April, May is very hot. In between is beautiful climate. Would you say that the land thrives because it goes through more difficulty, like a good metaphor, like it, you guys have to endure longer monsoon seasons, but it's greener because of it. Yeah, because I, I'll say we never had a problem with the water. Yeah, We have enough ah. food and everything. And people are more educated. They go abroad and live the best of where they are. Got it. So you did you grow up Christian or what? Yeah. Mix. Uh, my parents never bothered me about bit religion to practice, but we used to go to church, Orthodox, uh, Syrian Orthodox church. I'm still a mem member of that. I see. And, but you grew up with many Hindu people around you. Is the South yeah. mostly Hindu? Hindus, uh, Muslims, Punjab, uh, Sikh community and Jewish. We have a synagogue there. What? <laughs> really? Wow. I've never heard of ethnically Indian Jewish people. Uh, yeah. Wow. I, I'll, I'll say we, we have over 3,500 years business between Middle East and India because uh, Jewish people used to come to my state. You get all the spices. Nah. And they trade to Mumbai, Mumbai to other countries will go. So they used to come there. That's why Jesus came to India. That's a story about it. 
I it's a, a time when he was like 18 years he was living in, in india that's wild that's cool I, I had no idea i cannot picture an indian jewish man but that's fantastic i'm glad it exists um now okay i i want to pick your brain a bit about this because a lot of um the West views sexuality through the Christian lens, which is uh, kind of a dysfunctional relationship, right? Because Jesus never married. He didn't speak openly about sex because he didn't, wasn't qualified, I guess, right? There's a lot of different theories, but no, he definitely didn't really talk about it. And that void created a lot of confusion. The fact that there wasn't an official word in the New Testament about sexuality, clearly, like instructions, um, people have had to kind of interpret a lot. But I feel like, you know, Hinduism's far older, and it also deals with sexuality more openly, right? There's things about Tantra and things like that. But I feel like the Western perspective is pretty ignorant to that largely. Um, I know there's more interest now. There's new AG people who are kind of revisiting that, but I feel like there's a lot of ignorance. So would you be able to talk to us a little bit about, um, like in India, uh, the average Hindu family, is, is sexuality something to be feared or is it kind of openly discussed culturally? In the traditional way, uh, we have a system a student will go to a master to learn for 25 years then yeah. they'll have a uh, family and job for 25 years then they prepare for renunciation for 25 years and they will leave the family for 25 years that's the way the structure what are these last 25 years what are they doing they're just sitting? Uh, they're just uh, like a uh, monks you know they focus on the spiritual path that's it wow even they will go to forest and leave the that's so, it <laughs> it's kind of like a pre it's like you're sitting in the lobby waiting for the next life all right, all right. and in those first 25 years you're learning about all areas of life from your master he's all teaching right. about hygiene he's teaching about internal stuff he's teaching about oh. sex everything everything they learn from masters everything but usually they won't go for free sex or they won't have a relationship before the marriage that's a traditional style of course still people have a relationship you know sure but so that's like the ideal that's the teachings think like a sex is a sin we think sex is a divine action that's the way we take it so but in that in that paradigm sex is divine uh is it divine only in certain contexts like within a committed relationship or is it any form of sexuality is divine that's the way they take it well, there's a science about sexual uh, sex in indian culture called uh, kama shastra kama shastra or, yeah or kama sutra they, okay. they talk about you know different positions how to do it and all all the stuff is there usually masters won't teach to a student because they want to make sure student is matured enough to learn it otherwise they won't because once people get some knowledge they don't know what they're going to do it <laughs> because true. this is very difficult for a person to control it sure you know but what what would a kid do like a say a 15 year old kid who's learning the ways of life from a master. I mean, you start having many hormones, you, you know, your body's right. changing, you start to really notice things sexually. Um, what is the guidance there for, for somebody in that situation? So like in the Christian lens, it's just, you know, save it for marriage, otherwise it's a sin. This is the one place and we don't right. educate you about that. You gotta figure it out on your own, but anything else will tell you a lot about how much you're gonna burn in hell. Right. So what's the approach for like a formative 15, 16, 17 year old? So when you look, look at the histories, Hindu traditions, they have earlier marriages. Oh, okay. They have arranged marriage. So select a male and female when they are matured, you know, mm. they know the puberty time. So they prepare them to uh, 
uh, have a marriage, so they arrange the marriage and they cannot have sex, then they'll wait for that time, education finished, then they'll have the wedding, then they'll have sex. Even before 25, they had this system. Got it. And what would, what would happen, let's say if one of the, there's a guy and a girl, there, there's some sort of arrangement and one of them had sex before, you know, they were about to be arranged. Would that be a negative? Would that be harder to match your, your child with another kid for that arranged marriage? Is that perceived to be a negative is what I'm saying? Some, some families they used to feel like, but usually uh, masters are very mature. Yeah. Got it. So there's if, communication. They know how children are growing up. They're not in nature. They'll uh, feel it. So we have herbs to control the bodies. Sex, you know. They have mm -hmm. the different types of bodies. Yeah. So you, I mean, within Hinduism, there's like the, the act of sex is taught through Tantra and tantric sex and all that. But then isn't there a way of controlling energies that's embedded into the ethos of Hinduism that if you are feeling sexual, you can do some breathing, for instance, or do some meditation to calm yourself. Is that, is that discussed? The, yeah, it is. Because food is the major source for aggravating the energy, what we eat. So usually they used to have more vegetarian food and less food, not like a five times a day eating meal. Is they that to, to reduce your energy? Day. So you don't have so much energy to, to spend thinking right. about sex. So when they eat a lot of meat and fish and egg, they have this aggressiveness in the body. So they cool down the body. So they have different herbs for the... Is that Ayurveda? The... It's Ayurveda, naturopathy, Siddha, you know, like a different types are there. And so Ayurveda, because I remember you told me this once. You said, don't drink hot drinks and i was like what do you what is this what are you talking about right like where how'd you make that up but you were just talking about the type of body that i am there's certain so what you're saying is that certain foods impact how you feel and so in terms of being unmarried there's certain foods that you probably shouldn't eat because it might put you in a sexualized state okay. interesting so what, what do you think, what type of food would cause somebody to be more sexually aroused? Is it like meat? Because you're saying vegetarian. Meat, meat uh, fish, certain fruits also aggravate. And fast, fasting is a very important role in our system. Hmm. Yeah. How often do you fast? Uh, for, usually, I used to fast like one, one week. Water for years now i eat one meal a day that's it ah so long time. kind of like intermittent fasting Correct. wow so i want to i just want to go back real quick because uh a couple weeks ago i heard a guy talk and he said something so i i doubled back and i researched it and it's true but india has the lowest divorce rate in the entire world they have one percent divorce rate and they're doing arranged marriages which is incredible there's something to be said right um yeah so it, it, it. how does how much is arranged marriage uh kind of like a a team project where the parents are working with the kids and how much is like still about like getting a dowry right like you're kind of like giving your daughter to somebody for some money kind of thing how much of it is like now in this modern age i guess uh, you're talking with your kids and they're, they're saying, well, I kind of like this guy and all that. How much participation is involved? Uh, dowry is a crime in India now, last uh, 30 years. A dowry is a crime? Crime now, yes. Oh, wow. So that a lot of changes happen. And uh, divorce rate went a little bit higher now because of the Western style of life coming up. And But still, there is a, a group effort because one, you marrying a person means you marrying the entire family. It's a group system, you know. Yeah. The campaign life is there, and society will reject you if they see you are doing something wrong to the family. That will make people 
less mis- doing less mistakes you know they just go up that's the way it is and sometimes i feel if a male or female if they are not sexually fit that will create a problem in the their life for a longer period but they take it you know because of they had to stand in the community yeah, yeah so so the families are communicating with each other and they're trying to see if they're a good fit and right. if one family does something sneaky or they're mean then the rest of their larger community will let them know that that's not cool kind of thing so uh, there are repercussions right. before that's going to the court people will enter in that subject yeah i mean that's that's called accountability and that's so important because i think you know there's no accountability in the western way of dating it's just feelings no accountability whatsoever um and then <laughs> you know different forms of arranged marriage we like within our movement um there's some parents that i know that have done some shady stuff and hey. you know yeah it's it's nice to have accountability it's not good to like you know exile a family or something but it's good to like let them know hey that that affects us all when you do stuff hey. like that and so <laughs> sorry do you have something all, all depend upon our uh, imagination i'll say you know mm. Mm-hmm. the uh, christian or muslim or uh, jewish tradition they have set mind about the sex sexual relationship but when you look at the animal kingdom they won't go and run around sex always when they need they will do it but human beings are not like that they can do 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> they have the, the mindset like that yeah. so they need the education from the childhood you know how to respect a lot of times you see the um, male dominated sex is going on so that, yeah. that's also not good you know it should be respect should be there love should be there the vedic tradition they say if you don't feel love towards each other do not have a sex if you want to have a child have a sex that's the way they used to teach so if you don't feel love for each other don't have sex does that mean even even if you're married but you're not feeling Correct. loving towards each other do not have sex first feel loving then have sex Correct. amazing yeah that That's means it's it's divine it is divine yeah divine because it's about spirit it's about something higher than the body Correct. how is there any discussion openly in the texts of hinduism or formal formal teachings about masturbation and just having sex with yourself uh usually those things they never talk about but my experience with the master they talk about it you know masters talk so that the energy or the hormone changes children want to do it you know but that's a, that's a time the elders will know this happening yeah so they will take care of them you know they talk with them now they know they are getting ready that's a time they are in the marriage <laughs> <laughs> their bodies are getting ready yeah. yeah that's interesting because i i mean we educate a lot of people on how to harness that energy because it's a very creative and powerful energy but we don't have any definitive teachings you know everybody's kind of a little bit different but it do you do you have any effective breathing techniques that you know that or anything that you do to not just sexuality but like to focus your energy do you have any any recommendation that, that, that is the alternative uh, breathing technique called anuloma viloma you use one nostril breathe in and exhale through the other one and so you uh, breathe in through which nostril the left one left will start inhale okay close it and exhale to right inhale close it exhale to left like a 10 times a day you will do that so it will balance our energy in the body so that that balances your energies correct okay. interesting i like that and so you would do that just throughout the day uh, no you need only morning 10 times and the evening 10 times that's enough oh i see then then another thing is make a person always be see with the different things 
not allowing them to sit and we, we never allow our family members to watch pornography or any other stuff not getting how do you how do you not allow people like India has great Wi-Fi, I'm guessing. Any country with a lot of people, their Wi-Fi is so much better than America. No, now, they, guessing, now, yeah. now they watch it because it's all around the globe. You know? Sure. But a traditional, when we, we, we grew up, we don't know what is it. You know? Yeah. That's the way we grew up. When, when parents or elders know, then they'll talk about it. Otherwise, they never talk about it. What about the the gods? Because just before we started recording, you mentioned that there's sixty four thousand gods, right? Yeah. And more, I'll say more than that. <laughs> even more than that. Wow. Ma- so major, major, major god and goddesses. Only only in Hindu culture we can see a male god and a female god together. Okay, that's cool. No other religion, you know. <laughs> major one is. Uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and their wives, and they have families, you know. Really? But same time, they have restricted uh, family life. They have a spiritual path, you know. So very, very interesting to read all of this stuff. And they all always talk about male and female equal in the energy level. So it's about harmony, balance. Correct. And did the did the gods were they clear about sexuality? Because I know like the Greek gods were really more human than gods in terms of their sexual problems, right? But what about in Hinduism? Oh, we, we have a god only for sex, Kama Deva. Uh, say it again. We got to remember this. We name. have god only for sex. That's What's a Kama the name? Deva. Kama Deva. Kama Deva. Deva. And so that's where Kama Sutra comes from, is from this Kama. Correct. Correct. So what does that name translate to? Do you know? Sexy pants? It's a Sanskrit, from Sanskrit name. Okay. And is, is that the full name or does Kama mean, because Kama is desire, also- Desire, ka- actually desire. Desire, okay. Right. Deva means God. So all the teachings about sex are through the lens of this God. Right. And so and we, what... we, have, we have this uh, write up about only, only about sex. It, like a, like a book within the text. A book. Correct. And it's just about this one God's story. Uh, in the book, they're not talking too much about this God, about the activities. Oh, the gods all the all the poses and everything there. <laughs> no, no, no other book in the world, only in Hinduism. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sex is so confusing in most, you know, scriptures. It's a very like the Bible, the Old Testament, you know, the Quran, all this. It's uh, confusing, and it's yeah, they, scary. They, they, <laughs> that's a problem. They take it as a sin, you know. Then all the people have this mentality. That's a sin. That's a sin. Mm-hmm. And they cannot enjoy, you know, yeah. rather than educate them. This is a divine action to have a procreation, you know. Yeah. It should be beautiful. And, and the thing is, even in Ayurveda, they'll say, have a sex with your wife only once in a month. <laughs> really? That's Ayurveda? Correct. Because what, what happens if you have too much sex? What happens to you? Actually, you are losing your energy from inside. I see. Uh, 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 semen is a condensed form of energy from all the different types of fluid in your body. So you don't want to waste it. Use mm. it for a off way, you know. So once a month is healthy, and then what? what are some of the repercussions of... Uh, too much sex. Then they had to cut down the food. Less. F- <laughs> Less food. <laughs> well, this is tough. Uh, and so if, but but the, the repercussion of like, let's say you have sex three times a week kind of thing. Um, does that take away from your creativity? Does it take away from your connection to God? Or like, what what are the, Downsides. Uh, the, 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 a, in the Hinduism, we say God created us in God's 
uh, body, including us, right? Okay. The five five elements. So we had to respect that body. Uh, any actions in the body, and whatever you do, we have to celebrate that moment in your life. Even breathing, we had to, you know, take it as a divine action going on. You sure. talk. That's a type of uh, constant meditation. You know, even sex is part of that. Like so when, when you go to the deeper level of that mode, you are not going to feel it. Oh, I want to do twenty-four hours. You know, you enjoy it. You stay in that blissful state. Mm. As you well, I can see that. End of spiritual way, where you do think about and do it. You know. I I can definitely see that. It it's just you. You're more, I guess, present if it happens less because it's special. Got it. Um, and I think you saying that for all the women listening, they're like, "Yay!" For all the men, they're like, "No, shut up! <laughs> Don't say that." But I do I do agree that like infrequency adds to the value of it a little bit more. Right, just like anything, the more rare something is, the higher the value it's perceived to be. Like just think about, you want to eat a, a ice cream, right? You enjoy it, then you take second one. Not that much. You take five. You don't want to eat for long. <laughs> yeah. And you know, then you lose that quality. Yeah, eventually you just get sick. I saw I saw a guy eat too much ice cream and it was, it was ugly. Yeah. No, I, I definitely hear you. And our, our culture is definitely oversexed. It's like they can't even stop even though they're not enjoying it as much. Um, and there's definitely mental and spiritual and emotional repercussions. Okay. And I guess even physical, right? Physical, you're depleted of a certain power that you would have otherwise. Okay. Okay. I see. And so um, I guess if if when you say you go by the clockwork of those four phases at 75 do both men and women leave their families and go pray in the woods for 25 years that's nice, a very traditional way now people are living together husbands and wives will go yeah they live together yeah. that's nice but their their priority is more on spiritual things than on physical right. things in india whatever you do everything related to the spirituality in Hinduism, that's the way it is. I see. So how how can you learn to appreciate people, especially of the opposite sex, right? So in a culture like the Western world, um, where everything is sexualized, right? Uh, you 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 live in New York, so you go to Times Square and you see all the advertisements are sexualized, right? So when everything's being sexualized. How do you kind of reverse that and start seeing the divinity in people rather than their their body parts? Is there a process that you would recommend? It's a, I, I, this is my observation because I came to America when I was 30. So I already cultured certain way in India. Okay. So I had the balance here. If I came here earlier, I may be in different <laughs> style of life. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So once they learn something from childhood, it's very hard to understand what we are talking about. Sure. So that, that, that's where we try to mix people to understand different cultures. So slowly they'll understand. Even the philosophical points, we say things to students. Those who are from West, they won't pick up very fast. <laughs> it's very hard for them because they never experience. Sure, sure, sure. So we had to bring them to India and show them how life is there. Even Indians are living in America is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they maintain their own culture. So, but okay, I guess I'll phrase it in another way. But like, you know, in Christianity, there's this idea of resurrection. So you, you fall away, you lose your way, and then to come back into the way is called, you know, to be resurrected or to be born again. In, in Hinduism, um, somebody strays and they go away from the way, the, the true way of living. Um, what, is, what, are, what are the teachings on how best to come back to the, the way? Yeah, we, we have the karma philosophy 
before any other religion. Karma, yeah. Karma. Yeah. So usually we'll tell everybody, you know, you had to live proper way according to the teachings. But still people make mistakes. So even you think about, yes, I made a mistake. That moment itself will change the structural and the energy level. Mm. Whatever we think, whatever we do is connected with our karmas. Even uh, the high level of astrology teachings are in, in Indian philosophy. Uh, and if you get the new child in your house and astronic, uh, astrological star is different, it will change the atmosphere at the home. Or once somebody is coming to your house to visit you, their astrology is different. So that, that will change the situation. That's the way, wow, that deep it is. That's really cool. And we have the rituals, the different types of rituals. To help What's people. the purpose of the rituals? To become more vertically aligned? Correct, yeah. Okay. Like uh, jumping on one foot <laughs> or what? Right. Elena, even, even um, evil spirit walk around us. We never see that. But uh, great masters can see what is going on around us. Yeah. So they, they have rituals for that. <laughs> you, even they burn certain herb, herbs or plants and these uh, souls cannot stay in, near that. So they leave. Yeah. yeah. You can't, good and bad don't mix. One has to take over. Yeah. Right. Well then, I'm just trying to like squeeze all of as, as much as I can from you as possible, because you're right. This is kind of new information for a lot of people. Um, do you have any advice for, I would say we have all sorts of different people who listen to this. We have moms and dads, but we also mostly have younger people who are about to get married or recently married. Do you have any advice for how to stay in giving mode and to be happy and to like that idea of being grateful all the time. Do you have any advice for how to maintain a high level of gratitude? Yeah, that's the thing I'll say. We all are chosen divine being on this earth. Maybe we are from different religion or culture. Does it matter? God never differentiate any of us. We all are made of the same five elements, but we had to get the practice how to expand our consciousness. When you expand, you feel your partner or family members are divine beings. So you give the respect and the love in the full force. Mm. That's the thing we need. How you mother feel uh, love towards a, a child, mm -hmm. same feeling you should have towards everybody. I see. That's a real love, you know. And do you do that? Do you practice that by meditating, you know, in the morning and, and opening your heart? Or how do you, because you live yeah, in New York City, which is probably the most unloving place in the cosmos. How do you practice that? You no, know, for, for me, I used to live in caves and <laughs> mountains. <laughs> so when I came here, it was very hard for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. E even uh, when we walk on the street, we say hi. When I say hi to people here, I say something wrong in this guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's how we grew up. Yeah. Then slowly I learned it and still I'll say hi to people and slowly they became friends. I feel I'm comfortable, you know. Sometimes people give a really hard time to me. I take it easy. I know their understanding is different than me, mine. Mm -hmm. So I should be more wiser than others. I take it, everything nicely and move forward. That's the way I am. Well, I can, I can attest to the fact that he's, he walks the walk. I've seen him. Uh, he was even so calm and peaceful that he could sit through my sermons back when I was a pastor <laughs> and not, not throw his shoe at me. So yeah, he's great. Thank you, Delete. This is really this is really cool. I liked. I really feel like the the whole story is you know taking bits and pieces and creating a story that makes sense from all different cultures because God was speaking to all sorts of different people at different times and the more that we can create this new world that's forming with all the wisdom from the different areas and sex. I think you know we've been talking a lot about it, but that plays such a huge role and. 
in building the future, obviously it's how the future is made, but our ability to have a healthy relationship with sex is so important for a peaceful society. You work at the UN a lot. The UN has a very difficult record with sex, right? Right yeah. now, they've, they've, so many things are coming to the surface about they don't have that under control at all. And so, yeah, I really appreciate your perspective and your wisdom. Um, do you have anything you want to say before we go? Yeah. Uh, the thing, thing is, you, uh, we, we people are supposed to uh, read and educate about all other religious texts and the philosophical texts and understand what is the meaning of life. Mm. Life is very short, you know. Yeah. So when you understand the meaning of life is totally different perception for us. Do not stick with this is my religion. Religions are made by man, human being. But the divinity or the spirituality already exists in the universe. So that's why if you practice Christianity or Hinduism or Buddhism or Islam, just go deeper to the philosophy and understand what's the meaning, why they create this one, then you go beyond it. Yeah. Even I never promote Hinduism, there's no point of promote. When you opening up, automatically everything will come to you. That's the way it is. We had to open up person. Even if I was very interesting to walk through the Jesus path. I went to Israel and Palestine and all of that stuff and see. And somebody told me Jesus had a, a relationship and family as a hidden story. So even stories from Bible or any of the textbooks, we don't know this real or not. Sometimes people make up stuff, you know. <laughs> One example I'll say, Adam and Eve are the first people on earth. But the same Old Testament talk about other people. You know, but that neighborhood, maybe. Sure. Because people don't know about the other side of the world. Those days <laughs> are different. So do not stick with the certain points. You have to use the logical way. And science and spirituality should go hand in hand. Do not separate it. And science is not the ultimate answer for life. And the textbooks from religion is not the ultimate. What you experience your life, that is a measure for a person. Yeah. So give the respect, learn it, and make sure you are studying and understanding. A lot of time people go to teachings and hear and go through this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they think they know already. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think that the the divinity that idea of the closer you are to god um the more everything will make sense so it's more of not adhering to stringent rules for the sake of your religion but finding the best way to live with god i really like that and i love how you were saying that in india the priority is to make everything spiritual as much as possible and I do believe that that's super important, especially for the work we do, because the closer you are to God, the less you want to abuse other people for your own power or pleasure. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for that wisdom, for that end note. And um, yeah, is there any way that people can reach you? Do you want us to include your email in this? Are you yeah, okay I can, sure. Thank w you so much, www.guruji.us. You get all the information. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. You got a website. Wow. He's got a website. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I will include this for sure. 